Three up, two across, tap that play button three times and walk through the archway into Dialogue Alley. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Dialogue Alley is a show about Harry Potter books, book translations, and all other things magical. I am Eric, and with me today is Melanie from the Harry Potter Collection. Hello. And she's back, everyone. It's Carly from All the Pretty Books. Hello. Hello. She's back. Is she? Hello. I think so. She's here. Oh, hey, Carly. Hey. She's here. (laughs) Yeah, she's Carly's not doing uh, duty. Nope. Oh, God. The duty jokes. Here they come. <laughs> oh, it was too good. I got the giggles so bad when I was listening to that. <laughs> Apparently, Carly did, too. I always have the I giggles, so. you guys. Well, giggles are good. At the most giggles inopportune times. Happy. That's, well, that happens to the best of us. Uh, and speaking of the best of us, uh, it's the best of us. It's all three of us. Yeah, which is great. I've missed and you guys. All uh, we, we missed, missed you, too. you too. We talked all about Chamber of Secrets without you, so you'll have to do a bonus episode where you can tell everyone how you feel about oh. Chamber of Secrets. We're not missing much. Well, we're missing something. I'm sure everyone is dying to know what you think about Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Movie. Yes, the, the movie. Yes. Yeah. Oh, the movie. The oh, movie. the movie. So we can, Carly, you and I could talk about it in a bonus episode at some point if you want to. We shall. We shall. Because. Okay. You know, I've live tweeted you guys when I tried to watch it. It didn't go. Yeah, you got about 30 minutes in and I had to stop. <laughs> yep. It's, I, it was a three-parter for me. I think I mentioned it last time. But oh well. But we're not here to talk about Chamber of Secrets. We're here to talk about books today, which is why we're all making this podcast in the first place, because Melanie, Carly, and myself are all Harry Potter book translation collectors, which means we collect Harry Potter books in languages from all over the world, which is a super cool hobby, because there are at least 95 of them, which is amazing. And I was actually just talking to a parent at school, the one from Gudrat. Oh, cool. And um, I was telling him that I found the Gudrati and I found the Malayalam and I, I finished my collection and he was super happy for me. Um, but he was just surprised at the total number of translations there are for this book that it's, it's like more than any other book that he can, who could have, could have thought of. So most people are, most people are. Yeah. It's just, it's a lot. It's a it's lot, a lot of, of translations books. for one book. Yep. It's, it's all the pretty books. It is. Ah! <laughs> So anyway, uh, we're here today to talk about those amazing books, and uh, we'll tell you a little bit more about um, why we're talking about them in our main segment, but it has to do with with um, with the cover page, the title, <laughs> the front. The front. The beginning. It's a very good place uh, to start. It's a very good place to start. Um, so we're, we're glad you're here, everyone. If this is your first time, welcome. If it's not your first time, Welcome. Uh, You get the same welcome, but we're just glad everyone is here listening to us uh, talk on this Friday that we are recording, on this Friday in which our podcast starts. Oh, and it's, and here on Long Island, it is dull and gray, I will say, so it's It's beautiful. It's sunny and wonderful here. It is getting so hot. It was like in the 90s yesterday. Oh, man. We've been in the 50s. We go from like 30 to 90 in a week. It's pretty crazy. We had snow the other day. Oh, that's fun. Uh, we're in that weird time of year where you walk outside in the morning and it's freezing out, so you need a heavy jacket. And then by, like, midday, you're sweating and in a t-shirt and shorts. Oh, that's like the times. Florida Florida attire. Oh, it's so weird. It's so weird. I it never know weird. how to dress my kid. I feel so bad. I'm like, wait, she needs her winter coat, but also I need to send her bathing suit and her baby bag. Yeah, because <laughs> it might be water day today at daycare. <laughs> That's right. Uh, much like the weather, do you know what else is changing? The news? The news. It's always changing. Let's talk <laughs> about it. Oh, well, it changes every day, you see. So, 
So the news. Melanie finally has her Ali Moss Swedish books. Hooray. Well, Which I mean, are actually yet. Those are yeah. Well, they're ordered. That's a start. And they're that like is. for those who don't know the Ali Moss Swedish books are really fun. They're Ali Moss covers and they're not quite hardcover. They're kind of that flexi cover. Oh, they're just delightful. You're going to love them so very much. I'm so excited. And they've been on my catch up list. I can't wait. Like, honestly, we need to have we need to have when you get those, we need to have the one of the Swedish Ali Moss covers be a translation of the show because of how it, it, it honestly just because of how it feels in the hand. And I oh want to discuss God, interpretation good. of cover art. Well, it would have to be the first one because I only have the first one. Fine, we'll do book one. We can accommodate. We'll accommodate you, Eric. Don't worry. But I would like I would like to get the other books in that set because it's pretty awesome. Especially we, we've we've mentioned it before, like the cover is essentially the same picture in all seven books of Hogwarts and like the lake and mountains, but they just change the tone and the colors and and like the different yeah. features of the. And of it's the really picture. fun. It, it, yeah, and I, I think we talked, we, we alluded to that when we were talking about the Chinese deluxe edition books that I, I just completed that set, where right. the front of all the books looks very similar, um, but they just change kind of the the, the small details mm-hmm. of the of the image. So, like, I think the Ali Moss ones do this even they better do. than those, and those, and those books are spectacular. So, man, Swedish is just hitting a home run. I mean, I, I'm sure they play baseball there, so they would totally, like... <laughs> <laughs> Love that analogy. The, uh, Swede, the Swedes are hitting a home run with their Harry Potter covers. And I love, I think they're the only, are they the only uh, books to use those covers by Ollie Moss? I think so. I'm I pretty think sure. So. Um, yeah. I think what's cool is like, I'm pretty sure that this artwork was well known art throughout the world because they look like travel posters and i feel like they do people they do knew, yeah. yeah and people knew the ali moss harry potter cover art for the longest time and this is the first time that we're having them as books so um i think that's why i'm like so excited for them although i would i wouldn't be surprised if we get an albanian version of that book at some point give it time that's it all time. they do i know <laughs> they need their own cover art like i think it would be fantastic if they did they make good quality well, books. We'd, we'd buy it if they made it. Well, that's not saying much. <laughs> to be yeah, fair. Yeah, for us, I suppose. <laughs> you need a little bit more to convince the other casual collector. Um, Wasn't someone talking about the new, like, a 25th anniversary U.S. edition? I feel like that would constitute, like, that would be considered news. I think that's news. I, I haven't seen a Which, picture of that yeah, yet. Me but either. That yeah, was, me neither. That that was that was brought to our attention in our Discord by one of our wonderful Patreon members. Yes. I would um, I'm really excited. I wonder who they're gonna get to do that. I feel like someone said that they were like slip co- were they like slip cover books, like books with slip covers on them or I would but love it, it if, if we did something like the jelly bean set or what I call the jelly bean set, the gift editions by Bloomsbury. I would love something I love like that. Oh, I know. They're just happiness on a, on a bookshelf. I do love those books. Those are so nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't I, – I wouldn't mind if it was like Mary Grand Prix art but done in like a different – kind of way like honestly the way that they're doing the 25th anniversary for bloomsbury i feel like is a very like deluxey kind of edition i feel like if we had like the mary grand Prix art with like gold gilded edges and a ribbon bookmark and they were just done really really nice with a slip case i wouldn't be upset with those being Mary Grand Prix art and not having a new cover artist for the 25th anniversary, if that's what they went with. Yeah, I agree with that. As long as yeah. they are a little bit better than the uh, <laughs> the collector books ones, one and, books oh, one and two collector edition. Yeah, the no, I don't want, that falls I don't want off. those. Um, yeah, so this was brought to our attention by Marty uh, over in Ireland, and he says that's which is ironic because uh, the Scholastic books are not printed in Ireland. <laughs> um, but they're nope. releasing a new box set of the U.S. hardcovers with the Grand Prix art in January. Um, That'll be that's awesome. That's kind of all we know. That would be. I'm very excited about seeing those. Yeah, and we, we don't really have a good picture of that yet. I mean, there's there's a listing on Amazon U.S. Um, 
for these books and on Amazon UK also. And there's there's no image yet, so um, like we can speculate all we'd like regarding these. So we'll 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 keep our eyes on this. I, uh, on this I could see them going with Mary I mean, Grand Prey, but I could also see them going with someone else. I don't know. Yeah, and I'd, I'd be fine with either one, really, yeah, as long as too. it's done. We always done have well. great illustrators, so I'm not going to worry about it. Right. I feel like so. if it was a new illustrator, we would have heard about it by now. Is my is my opinion. I feel like when but Brian Selznick came out with his art, it was huge. We knew yeah. about it well in advance, and it was it was a huge deal when those books came out. And he went around, um, what's the word? Not not like advertising, but he went around. He toured like, on it, didn't he? Pro- promoting, yeah, promoting, promoting, promoting. Like he went around promoting these books like hardcore. And I feel like that's because he was. Well, I mean, also Brian Selznick is like. In book world, I feel like a pretty well known cover artist. He's a very well known artist yeah, he's in, a well-known in name. general, um, especially because of Hugo and um, Cabaret. Yeah, he's he's ridiculously amazing. So it was so cool that he was coming out and doing the Harry Potter books. So I do feel like if we were getting new cover art, we probably would have heard about it already. But um, I just but yeah, like I said, I wouldn't the, be the twentieth anniversary Brian Selznick in hardcover. Like I would have loved that. Well, you can get them in French. I know. And I need to. <laughs> but you know what I mean. I know. I'd love that set too. I know. I, I love that it's one of my favorite cover arts. I love I love the Brian Selznick art. Um but I guess we'll have to wait on it. Same. And I love that they're the Hebrew well, Hebrew are done in that art too, aren't they? Yeah. And Italian as well. main segment today we are talking about something that i am super super passionate about it is one of my favorite harry potter book translation collecting topics it's um actually i feel like it's something that you guys already talked about and when you did it was the one that i was like oh my god i can't wait to start recording with these guys because i cannot wait to talk about this topic and we were thinking the same thing because carly and i are like while we're out (laughs) I love it so much. When's Melody going to join so she could tell us more? (laughs) I literally like sat at my kitchen table tonight and I said to my husband, I was like, babe, I'm really excited to record tonight because we are talking about blah, 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 blah. And he's like, wow, that's so nerdy. Like, it sounds really (laughs) interesting, but it sounds so nerdy that you're so excited to be talking about this. We're Um, all super excited about it. I'm I'm pumped. Um, and before we get into the main the main topic, I'm putting a disclaimer out there that um some sort of twilight barking is happening in the in the house behind my house, and there's a hound dog that's trying to communicate to another dog somewhere on Long Island to say that there are some 101 Dalmatian puppies missing, and this dog is nonstop barking so if you guys hear barking in the background it is either this dog that's barking or it's my dog rubius hagrid trying to tell this dog that the dalmatian puppies are okay and to go to bed so that's my that's my disclaimer my disclaimer is it's just loud where i am right now and i apologize (laughs) oh but we'll, we'll do our best so you guys don't have to hear the dog but if you hear a dog that's that's what's happening in the background. Um, so for our main second for our main segment today, oh my gosh, guys, I'm like falling asleep on my face here. Um, for our I'm not I'm going, I'm I'm gonna I'll be okay. We'll we'll make it. Um so for our main segment today, we are talking about pre-movie font. I'm so excited. I love Hooray! I am too, but you're going to have to think of a better title than the one I already thought of for the one that Carly and I uh, recorded uh, way long ago. I know. And I definitely – we'll come up with something great for it. But I mean, that that one was called Flourish and Fonts, pre-movie oh. and movie fonts on book covers. Yeah. I personally think that it was, was one of my good. best titles that I've ever come up with. That's really and, good. I mean, I typed it out. I blew it up on big paper and I framed it and it's in my basement. Just just that phrase there. Wow. And I look at it every day to remind myself about my creativity. Wow. That's amazing. That's good. That's good. 
Um, that is a beautiful title. So we'll, we'll, I'll come up with something. I'll I'll think about okay. it. I've got a little bit I of time. I can't wait. Um, so we're doing a bit of a deeper dive into pre-movie fonts today because it is something that has been a hot topic of conversation in the Harry Potter translation collecting community for a little bit. Um, and we are going to let you guys know our list of pre-movie font books and then also talk a little bit more about um, a like side category of that, because there are also books that have unique font, but they're not pre-movie because they didn't come out before the movie. What makes pre-movie font pre-movie font? Um, and we'll kind of chat about like some of these little like outlier books, because there are some that don't really fit into either of these categories. And that's OK, too. But we're going to talk about all of them. Um, so Carly and Eric, first of all, what, what is pre-movie font? Well, for most, well, or at see, least, I guess. You see, I, there were these. Go oh. on. Car, car, I, I just <laughs> that was kind of a train wreck between the two of us. It was. So, um, <laughs> you see everyone, um, there are these things called the Harry Potter movies that came out, um, which came out after the Harry Potter books in the United States. And the movies used the same font that the words Harry Potter were printed in in the American cover art for the books, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. And that iconic cover art has kind of, I don't want to say taken over as like the iconic font. It, it, it's You've seen it. Everyone, everyone that's uh, listening to this has seen it. If you've read a Harry Potter book... You've probably seen what the American cover looks like. It's got, or watched the movies, really, in any language. It's the uh, it's the letters. They're kind of all scraggly and weird. Um, but the P has this iconic lightning bolt coming out of it, and that really kind of is the like the the main staple of the movie font. So these books started using the same font that was in the movie, which is why we call it movie font. So. There are languages that Melanie will go into that had previously used a different font on on a book. And even the UK books that that still use their own font, when the movies were released in the UK, they used this, you know, Harry Potter movie font in the movie. So it's just a very iconic, um, I'd almost say like the font itself is is like synonymous with Harry Potter at this point. Oh, like it's the brand. The Wizarding... That's, yeah, it's the that's brand. The brand. It's, it's part of the exactly. branding. It's the brand. You go to the Wizarding World, like it's there. You, you read a book, it's there. Even the Fantastic Beasts movies, like it's not really there, but like you can tell it's influenced from it. So, um, I, I I think just to kind of hop on that like popularity bandwagon, a lot of different publishers around the world that had released their own versions of Harry Potter before the movies came out before that was like the iconic worldwide Harry Potter font. Um, they use their own fonts, but they said, Hey, you know, like if we switch to this iconic font that's used in the movies that they're, that they've taken from the American books that uh, maybe we'll get a little bit more uh, sales in our books or just a little bit more recognition that you know, like this book goes with this movie that everyone's talking mm -hmm. about. How'd I do for that? That sounded good. That, okay, good. That was good. I, I felt like I was talking in like a tornado of, of tanglement, but as long as <laughs> you understood what I was trying to convey, I'm satisfied. Yeah, I think that was great. It's literally these books came out with a unique font, then the movies came out, then they changed the font, and that was the only thing that changed about these books. And um, that's going to be like our first category of font discussion are the books that the only thing that changed on these books was the font. And and like I said, there are kind of like outlier scenarios where down the line, um, they, maybe they changed the cover art or new cover art came out. And then with that, maybe the font changed. Um, but these are specific books. Like you look at this book and then you could look at the exact same book next to it. And the only thing that's different is the font. So Carly, do you want to mention any dates? So generally speaking, like 2001 is when the first movie came out. The first book, The Mary Grand Prey, you know, first edition Harry Potter came out in 98, right? 
And some of these translations, like French, German, Dutch, Italian, Spanish, they all be, they all came before that. They came out actually, well, not but they came out like they started translating early, like ninety eight, ninety, like late ninety seven, ninety eight. 99, 2000 is when these translations were really coming out. And they had different fonts, right? And then the movies came out. The first movie came out in 2001. And that's when the branding came out really with the franchise. That's when it got really, really big. And that font became part of the Harry Potter franchise branding. You see it on the movies. You see it on the posters, all the promos, and so on. And it was a big deal. And shortly after, not... All of the translations started going over to that for different reasons, but the majority did to associate themselves with the franchise and to associate themselves, hey, this is Harry Potter from here um, and not some other, I guess, series. But so really 2001 is kind of the cutoff for pre-movie things is what I would say. Cool. I mean, definitely good to know, like, if you want to be looking for a specific book. And I know some books, um, there's only pre-movie font for book one or some only for books one and two. And Mm -hmm. you might be, like, losing sleep trying to figure out if book three also had pre-movie font. Um, Like Swedish? Yeah. So knowing, knowing the years for all of these things definitely is important. So, um. Let's go through the list of pre-movie font books. And um, also, just want to put out there, if there is anything that I am missing or that we're missing or you think, hey, wait a second, what about that book? Um, In any of these examples, like send us a DM on our Instagram or send us an email at dialoguealleypodcast at gmail.com. Like we definitely want to know if we're forgetting something or if you want to debate us on a book that we think is pre-movie and you don't think it's pre-movie, like, we want to chat about it. So, um, yeah, we would love to hear everyone's feedback on those things. So, And I guess why it's important, too, because I get questions like, why does it matter? And value is one, although value on pre-movie isn't usually super great versus non-pre-movie in most cases. But it's good to know that they're out there, right? Like, I know some people that only want the earlier things. So, like, pre-movie is all they're looking for. If there's pre- and post-movie, they only want the pre-movie things because they like, mm-hmm. you know, that little bit of uniqueness. So, it's good That's to me. know that they, are, that they exist. And it, it's me, too, right? And I know I believe Johnny is one. Um, Peter's another. And then I have friends who – collector friends who just don't care. They just want the text block more than anything, like Harrison. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, um, well, and, and, Sean's like that, too. And, and I think it's worth mentioning, like, if you want to see what, like, I'm going to use Finnish, for example, because my first Finnish book was a movie font Finnish book. And, like, the like the copy I got has, like, the most outrageously amazing cover art, right? Like, it's the awesome. Finnish books are outstanding. But I had it had the, you know, the Harry Potter movie font on it. And if you wanted to see how the people in Finland envisioned like their interpretation of of the series, you have to get that book with the pre movie font because that's kind of the whole package. Like when they designed the cover of the book before that was you know the movie font was a thing, they said, "All right, this is what we're doing. This is our vision for the series," um, and and that's what they went with. So to me, that's kind of like the purest form of the unique cover art in general that you can get before it's kind of like a hybrid of whatever the local unique art is, plus this American, which became international, you know, title font put together to kind of make this new cover. So you can still get the these unique covers, like finish, right? You can still get them now with movie font. It's, it's the exact same art, but it, it, it's just not as pure to me or mm-hmm. to you, I'm assuming, and Peter and Sean, I'm sure I'm speaking for a lot of people that collect that, like, pure, unique book that it, it it's not the same kind of interpretation as it had been in the past yeah. the movie came out right so if you're a purist i think i think that's what it is carly like if you're a purist if you're like i want to know like what the germans decided to do with the book like you want the pre-movie german book if yeah. you don't care about that and you just want the german cover art that's fine there's there's really no difference 
Um, it's just not quite as pure, but it, it really doesn't look drastically different. So yeah, the pre-movie fonts, when we're talking about that, it just, it predates the movies is all these books do. Right. Exactly. That's a, yep. That's a great way to put it too. Yeah. So our list of pre-movie font books, and these are books that, again, these are the ones that it's the same cover, looks the same, and then all that changes is the font. So here we go. It's Basque, books one, two, and three. Check with the original cover art. So we're talking about Harry with the sorting hat. Um, that the came... top hat sorting hat. Yeah. So that's yeah. like the, the first, Abe Lincoln hat the with first, the... first, first, first one. Yes. With lips. <laughs> with the lips. Oh my gosh. Those one... big red lips. Woo! One of my favorites. Um, that one came with pre movie font and movie font. So just that one book. Um, Danish books one, two, and three. Dutch books yeah, one, yeah. two, and three. Um, which also fun fact, those ones were paperbacks. The paperbacks came out before the hardcover. Which yeah, the like hardcover. That's, that's, oh. uh, the hardcover yeah. Dutch didn't come out until like the, the first book one hardcover came out with like alongside book four soft cover. Mm-hmm. So like that, I feel like is uh, a little bit unusual. I feel like the the hardcovers usually come out first. So that's a it is fun fact. So you um, won't ever thanks. have a thanks, hardcover pre movie <laughs> Danish, which is kind of or Dutch. Rather, which is kind of sad. Yeah, but those paperbacks are pretty nice. Um, then we have Finnish, books one, two, and three. French, books one, two, and three. Mm-hmm. German, one, two, and three. This one is, I think, out of this whole list, this is the only one that I don't have, is Modern Greek, book one. Came out it is with so a- hard to find. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. They have also, either. isn't there a book two, though, that's mo- that's pre movie? I want to say that there is. I'm going to put I'm not two sure. I want to say Xander may mark. have it. I want to say I'm, Xander. May I have know it. Xander has. I know Xander has book one. I'm pretty sure you have book one. I do. Uh, I do have book I one. Do, and no, I want to say I he found me a, a pre movie book, two, But it didn't. He wasn't able to buy it. The guy didn't want to sell it, if I remember properly. Oh, that's, um, so, I, but, that's so cool. I want to say I may have even included it in a video when he and I met up at a library, but it could be wrong. Cool. All right. So modern Greek book one, possibly book two. And um, this one looks pretty similar to the Macedonian cover art or like, yeah. font. Um, so that's how you know that that's the pre-movie one. Um, then there is Italian books one, two, and three. And I will say also that... The Italian first print that we refer to all the time, the one where Harry is not wearing the glasses, that one is pre-movie font. But then there is also when that book was reprinted uh, with Harry having the glasses and with J.K. Rowling printed on the book instead of Joanne um, Mm -hmm. or Joanna. Was it Joanne? Joanna? I don't know. It was wrong. Whatever it was. I'm not looking at it like right the second. But um, that book is also a pre-movie. So there's like two pre-movie books of book one. Are they the same Just, font between the two? Yep. So it's it's a different it's two different fonts actually. So they're, yeah, they're different. Okay, that's so, what I thought. Are they different colors too? Uh the first It's red. Um they're and both green, red. Right? Hold on. I'm going to refer to my website where If I remember I, uh, properly, it's the this. one on the one without the glasses, like the very first print of the Italian. I want to say it's like bubblier. It is. It's like uh Harry, and then it, oh, it, you're right. It almost looks like bubble letters. It it is in red, and it says Joanne. Sorry, so there we go. It says Joanne K. Rowling, also in those bubble letters. But then when it was reprinted, it's in a different pre movie font, and that one is the same for books one, two, and three. And they're they're red on the first one still. Yes, I believe so. Yes. Okay. Because um, they shifted to green yes. for the movie font. Yeah. Okay. Still red. Uh, one, two, three. Yes, yes. I just checked, turned around and looked at my shelf. So fantastic. Yes. So there we go. Um, so I Italian is like a nice, cool little outlier as well. Um, Japanese book one. Yep, I'm not sure. And the book um, one pre movies are pretty easy to find in the Japanese. Books. Yeah, I feel like it's easier to f- come across than that than it is to come across the not pre movie for. The yeah, yeah, I've seen and, fewer and, and that- of the, the post than the pre. Mm-hmm. And it, it's not a very big part of the cover for no. that because no. it's 
um i mean the the, bo- the whole cover is in japanese except for this very tiny little it's probably like an inch and a half long maybe at mm-hmm. the top in the middle of the book that says harry potter and orange yeah and it's either like a super teeny tiny movie font or it's a super teeny tiny not movie font yep that's it but but the non movie font like the pre-movie font has a little broom under yeah it. it's, it's really fun. fun yeah so that's a that's a neat little book or not they, little book, like it's from a, big a book. from a distance. If someone held them across the room, like you couldn't even tell. It's so tiny. Yeah, I didn't realize until like way later, and uh, like after the fact that 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 was that it was different. Um, so then the next two are Portuguese and Serbian Cyrillic. Those mm-hmm. are both for books one and two, and those two are like a bit funky because they came out with the Mary Grimpray cover art. So you would think. That they would have that classic post movie logo, but they have unique, unique little pre movie font on them, which is really cool. But yeah, and Brazilian went with with green too, and like they when they switched to movie font, they stuck with green also, which looks pretty cool. I think it looks the awesome. Gold that we're used to. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's just interesting to me that they chose to go with a. The, the cover that was out, but not the font. What's so, interesting, too, is in the Brazilian it, Portuguese, though, you know, like, even after they switched to the movie font, they stuck with kind of that teal green foiling in the earlier yeah. prints. But later prints, it's actually, like, green printed on. It's ink. They oh, got, yeah, right, not, right. Not, not they got rid of the foiling. Yep. Mm-hmm. Could be cost savings, too. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure that that's the case. Um... And then after that, we have – now, forgive me because I am still, even after having, like, two discussions on the Spanish books, still super confused. But <laughs> European European Spanish, so the ones with that yellow border – I don't know. Mm-hmm. Th- these other ones have yellow borders, too. God only knows. I don't know. I don't know about the Spanish books. We don't talk about the Spanish books. It's a, we it's just a talk rabbit about, hole. We talk – we talk about Bruno. Um, so the European Spanish books, book one, two, and three. And then I also put the one, the Argentina Spanish books, one, two, and three. Now that this whole variant situation um, exists, I don't know if the Argentina one is the Southern Cone or if it's this other variant. I, I don't know. But those covers for I, one, two, and three I, have pre-movie font. <laughs> I would need to – I think all of us would benefit from figuring out when the Southern Cone titled Spanish translation was published. Like that when sounds like a Patricio the, question. A Patricio or a Potterglot question. Um, yep. Because like we we talked about with Potterglot, which if you haven't listened to that episode yet, man, you should listen to that. That was one of the most like enlightening conversations of, of all time. Plus, I mean, the Patricio episode is also amazing. We got to have both of them back on the show. Agreed. Um, but, you know, essentially the original Spanish translation was the one from Argentina. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they adapted it or, you know, for, for European Spanish, for Castilian Spanish. And then somewhere down the line, they adapted it kind of again regionally for Argentina, Chile, you know – other countries in South America dubbed the Southern Cone version. So I'm curious right. when that actual translation happened, because if it happened after the movie came out, then the Southern Cone Spanish, there's no way that like it could be the a pre-movie. Southern Cone Spanish yeah. translation could be a pre-movie fine. I so, know that some Southern, I know some Southern Cone Spanish has like Cono Sur above the barcode on the back yeah but above the but barcode i don't some, know yeah, some of them do. when they were pu- i don't know when the first one was published right so i mean i'd even argue saying like spanish argentina or blah, blah, blah. spanish argentina could just be called original spanish translation right right because that happened before any of the regional adaptations and those are the soft the covers language. correct yes yeah the msa yeah. soft cover book. and yep. their pre-movie yeah like absolutely. their pre-movie font I have um, those and, um, in my collection. We, we should mention also MSA is the name of the publisher. Like we talked about that with Patricio. Um, yes. Again, if you want to lo- know way more about Spanish books, listen to that episode with Patricio that we did. It, it was also just fantastic. Oh, so, yeah. 
We chatted a long time even after I think we were done recording with him because it was so fascinating. Yeah, that was a that was a great conversation. Oh yeah. Um, and the last translation with pre movie font is Swedish, but only Swedish books one and two. There's no not three, Swedish. and we spent a long time looking for Swedish three. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I spent so much time looking for Swedish 3 only to mm-hmm. realize that it did not exist. So it that's why you got to check out the dates. That's that's very important. Um, so the next category that we do want to talk about is books that have unique fonts. And they, for the most part, did come out after the movies. So like, they're like post-movie font books, but they don't have that classic logo. They have their own unique font for the logo so yeah, they just I, I kinda, ended up doing their some, own thing i have some insight on this like so they were sitting around the table and they're like hey everyone <laughs> the rest of the world seems to be going with this lightning bolt kind of iconic movie font to really kind of push the brand and, and boost our sales like what do you think nah and the people and the people in azerbaijan were like you nah. know what you know, we see that and we see the potential, but you know, we're gonna just we're gonna stick to our our own thing here. <laughs> because there are gonna be some crazy Americans and other people from around the world that are gonna buy our book anyway, even though they can't read or speak Azerbaijan. Wait, that's us. And so right. that is us. And they're gonna value it even more in their collection because we didn't conform to the quote cool harry potter font oh my gosh that the rest of the world that's is going us to. it's like that's you're us. reading my mind yeah wow so that's how it happened in azerbaijan yeah well so, there's a whole list of them there's a whole list of them yeah. and and these you know some of them they don't they don't fall cookie cutter into this category of like being post movie whatever like some of them i guess like icelandic and hungarian for example are they pre-movie the ones that came out like those did they come out before the movie? I I don't know. That's, that's I think why we're the talking Hungarian, about, like, like the, the Hungarian book one with the Indiana Jones cover. I believe that was ninety nine. Right. Okay. So that would make it pre movie. But however, what one thing that I kept mentioning when we were talking about pre movie is that what differentiates it and makes it pre movie is that another edition of that book has come out where the cover is exactly the same, but the font changes. So that's why I categorize the original hungarian in this unique font group because i would agree that's the didn't only remake. book much, with that font and it wasn't right. remade. much like much like the original icelandic also Correct. because i mean they came out with that one but they've also like my first icelandic book was the grand prey book and I, I i know that there are a lot of collectors mm-hmm. that that only have the hungarian grand prey cover because that right the the green one is is getting really hard to find. So it is, and it's getting really expensive one, to too. Extent. I saw one for sale. Totally. It was like almost eight hundred dollars. That's wild. That's insane. All right, so I'm going to go through a list of these unique font books, and again, if I'm missing any, and I'm definitely going to be missing some, but if if I'm missing any, um, definitely send us an, a DM or an email and just be like, hey, Melanie, Eric, Carly, what about this book? And then we can add it to our list. And this way it can um, be a resource for everybody. Um, Because at the end of the day, that's why we're here is to get that information out. So um, the first book on this list is Asturian. Oh, I love that. I love that font. It is so magical. So good. Um, And that Again, the Syrian was only printed for book one, so that is the only one that's that's got it. Um, Azerbaijani, the whole set, um, is that unique font. Bosnian, Breton, um, Catalan, but the only ones that have unique font are the one with the stock wizard, like that little Google image search for wizard, um, that that first book. Like those are one through three with the kid art. Yeah, and then right, and then the kid art—that's what I call it because it like kind of looks like like a little kid. It's drew cartoonish it, for sure. Right, stock wizard kid art for books one, two, and three, and those like large books. Those ones, I believe, are. I, believe I don't have those, so which I'll ones? Take your word for it. The big ones, those, the adult those covers. Big guys. I call them like the adult 
Catalan? Oh, I just call them I just call them the big books because there's only four of them and they're big and they're really big. They're I mean they're oh they're so cool. Um, but yeah, those ones have like unique font as well. Unique fonts as well. Um, then in what could be its own category, any of the books that use the British, like the Thomas Taylor covers that use that same UK font. I mean, technically, that's like the original font, but um, it's not using that same logo font that the movies use, that branded font. Right. Um, so that is the UK books, Hawaiian, Irish, Latin, Scots, and Welsh. All of those are, I guess. What did UK. Mallory use? Oh, that's a good question. I think they used unique art as well. So I can, I can. Add I know it's question. unique art, but I can't remember the font. It's a, it's a unique font. It I just, is. I just okay. turned around and gave it a look. See, hold on. I'm not out. Al- I'm up, not up to that alphabetically yet. So, uh, <laughs> So technically, I was just getting, I'm not the wrong Hawaiian yet triggered the Maori for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all good. Um, yeah, I know. I like well because alphabetically, I went to English, and then all the sub books under that, and now we're up to Farsi, which has its Farsi slash Persian also has unique font. It's a unique um, everything. <laughs> It is unique, everything. Um, (laughs) And then the Icelandic and Hungarian that we were just talking about, those have unique fonts, even though later on they're different. They use the Mary Grand Prix cover art, so they use the Mary Grand Prix font. They originally had that, like, unique font, even though they weren't pre-movie. Oh, it's just, it gets complicated, guys. I'm so sorry, but... We're trying to give you as much accurate information as we possibly can. <laughs> um, so other books that use unique font are um, Luxembourgish, Maori, Occitan, <laughs> another Spanish book, the Latin American Spanish books, the ones that have almost like the um, like the computer animated looking yes. cover art. Those ones have a unique font. Yeah, those are those are like the newer translations. Those are the ones that like are, I could go the, to not the newer yeah. translations, but like the newer covers yep. for those translations. The ones that like I could go to Barnes and Noble right now and I can go get those books. Yeah, and you can get those in uh Southern Cone Spanish also. Oh, don't tell me that. I'm so confused. I, so my my first official Southern Cone Spanish translation from Chile was uh that same cover in Spanish as the Latin American Spanish books. I feel like it's you rained all, on Mel's it's parade. It's all very confusing. I'm just so confused by the Spanish books. I need to go back and listen to the Patricio episode again. And then also listen to Sean's episode again. And then maybe I'll understand a little bit more. So I'm still so What confused. if we have Sean and Patricio on the same episode? We could just have point. the two of them like guest host an episode and they record their own episode of Dialogue Yeah, and Alley. the three of us can go get a blizzard at Dairy Queen in our respective yeah. cities and just uh, take the night off. That's I would love fun. that. I would love to listen to them talk. We Me should do too. that. That'd be so fun. Um, and the l- last ish book in this other font, unique font category, are the Vietnamese serials. Like the I, call I them the love comic those books, little like, serial books. Oh, they're so good. They're so good. So and they're those full of unique art. It. Like they're full of unique art. Not to mention they're so unique weird. Fonts. Yeah, They're they so are. weird and so great. Um, and Hold th- on. There is there is another one, but it is a hybrid, and I'm not going to talk about it until we get to our translation of the show. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my what goodness. Is, are, are you looking at the spine of your translation of the show? Oh, yeah. Wow. Mm. All right. Before we get to the translation of the show, I am just going to quickly, quickly, quickly mention that... Um, there are new anniversary sets and there are some like special edition sets throughout all of these languages that are going to have their own unique art. More often than not, the anniversary sets that have been coming out have been coming out with their own unique fonts. So Bulgarian, Slovak, Lithuanian, Italian, German, Thai, all of those new sets all have unique fonts on their brand new cover arts, which makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Um 
And yeah, and we know that there are other languages that borrow, like for example, like the new Thai art. Like I know we know Finnish has that same art. I think Brazilian Portuguese does also. They do. They have that same art as yeah, well. Yeah. So like I mean, they're they're borrowing these other new amazing covers as well. So yeah. Yep. So um. So yeah, we're not, we're not forgetting those and not counting those out for having their own unique font. There are also other additions like, um, like different. I know, like the orange Russian books I was just looking at before, like those. No, ones. don't talk about those with me, Melody. <laughs> You're so sour about that. I'm so sorry. I, that is my biggest regret of the book that I didn't buy. Uh, I'm taking really good care of it. <laughs> good. <laughs> um, but those ones have their own unique font. And then also I didn't mention like the European Portuguese that we talked about last week. Those I guess would fall under having their own unique font as well. Um, and then and just the when they're German later translated. that has its own unique font. Yeah. Oh my gosh. There, there are so many more. Um, but well, and their book club editions too mm-hmm. from other countries, like German book club, Spanish book club. Like, like there's just a lot that there. There are so many. I mean, can do what they want. Just to like sum things up, I will say for me, the books that matter are like those pre movie fonts, the ones that we talked about in that little list first, the ones that had a unique font when they were originally released, and then just the font changed on the cover art. Those are the ones that I'm like particularly. And interestingly, in a on. lot of the German book clubs were also pre-movie, right? So that would be part of the reason why yeah. they have yep. different. So fun. that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But I th- like I think what Melanie's saying, it's like it's just it's the purest form of the art. If you're if you're considering the font as part of the art and the presentation of the book before the movie came out, that is the purest form of that unique cover is to have that unique font that goes along with it. Yes, that's it. So that's it. That's that is it. that is pre movie font. Um and yeah, I think we should I think we should talk about that little hybrid book that you were just talking about in our translation of the show. Yes. Da, 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 da. So our translation of the show is Valencian. How fun is that? Yay! Yeah. So what's fun about Valencian is, is it is an ad- it's an adaptation from the Catalan, which I really love, by the by. Um, so cool. It is. This was one of my favorite books when I first saw the, the cover, which I know we're going to get into later, but it's just a phenomenal book. Anyway, I was so excited to find out it was a thing. And then I was even more excited to find out that it was adapted from the Catalan because that just really, as somebody who loves languages and things that just really made me excited. Um, so the translator, if anyone, can you pronounce this better than me, Eric? You might can, cause you speak Spanish. I'd be Laura. Yeah. Laura. Escorijuela. Fabulous. Wow, sounded beautiful. It did. Thank you. Adapted by the Salvador Company. The publisher is we'll Tandem. Get like fi- we'll, we'll get like five emails that are like, Eric can't speak Catalan or <laughs> Valencia. I know. That was but terrible. you gave it A for effort, and it was much better than I, I would have done. Uh, published by I Tandem, which I think well. is fabulous. There's so much, I have so much to say about this book, so I'm trying to keep it very brief, and I'm just going to kind of follow the list that we have here so I don't go off on a tangent. <laughs> on a scale of one to five, five being most difficult, how hard do you think the book is to get today? Also, I think it's also important to note, even though we're only talking about book one, there is a book two, which is really yes. cool too. Yep. But they quit. But it stopped there. They stopped, the, the it, they stopped there. after two because they decided that it was it was close enough to the Catalan that they could, that people who spoke Valencian, read Valencian could understand the Catalan version. Um, anyway, what would you guys think? How hard is this book to get today? For, For rarity? Yeah, like just to find. It's never been it's, very easy. Back even when I was... No. Back when I first started collecting, really, 2014-15, as far as translations go, Valencian was probably... I got toward the end, and I just lucked into it on Abe. It's one of my very, very few Abe purchases. Um, I want to say, and it was mislisted as Catalan, actually. And I think I paid oh, wow. $35 shipped out of a bookstore from actually New York. <gasps> oh my gosh. 
That's so right. exciting. That's what those dogs were barking about. There was another Valencian copy <laughs> that was mislabeled, <laughs> and they had to let us know. Oh, my goodness. But I so would say nice. today, I'd say, I'd say a you four, see them very at least rarely. a four for rarity. You see them I would. Rarely. I would give it a four. Yeah, I would yeah. say four for sure. They're they're tricky to come by, and and that's been for a while. Like yeah. I feel like since we started collecting, and since we've finished collecting just for book one, you know, there's the big six, but then right underneath that is the big everything else. Yeah, the the hard to find four. Like fours. And some you know? of these are like hybrids to almost big six, and I would say Valencian's heading that way because it's it's not going to yeah. be published again. What well, we've talked about that multiple times. Like any book that is out of print, depending yeah. on the print run, especially ones where they've only done maybe book one or maybe only books one and two. Like those books are going to be rare someday. So, like yep. I I would say this is a see it to buy it see it buy it book in terms of value because. It's just, it's so unknown, even by the locals. Like, my cousins are Spanish. Their dad is from Spain. And, like, one of my cousin's friends is from Valencia, the city mm-hmm. in the in the region, Valencia also. And he, like, he was my go-to. I'm like, oh, this is going to be a shoe in Like, I can have my cousin's friend just find this book for me in Spain. Nope. He was like, there's no way that even exists. <laughs> I'm like, nope, pretty sure. Like, here's a picture of it. And he's like... No, there's no way. Like that that's not a real thing. Yeah. So, like here's someone that's currently living there. Right. That is youthful enough to like have a cell phone and social media and use the internet that had just disbelief that this could possibly even exist. So, um well, and same. Yeah, they, like I have a friend living in Valencia. I have a friend living in Valencia and I have her keeping a lookout for me cuz she loves bookstores and she's never even seen it there. Yep. I was in Valencia and looked everywhere for it also. And I mean, granted, I didn't know where to look, but like when I was in or passed by any bookstore, like I did not see this book. Yep. It's it, and I've seen them selling like not just listed for sale, but I've seen them selling private sales and whatnot for anywhere between like 150 and I think four. So the prices for them are definitely going up. This is this is gonna make if you don't have this book, I'm sorry. I've had three of these in my possession at any point in time. Wow. Blows blows my mind. I got mm-hmm. one for myself. I found an I got another one in a trade actually, um, to a, a girl from Spain that was able to find one pretty easily and, and I had some books that she wanted, and then I got another one um I think in another trade, or maybe I found it also on Total Collection. I you get lucky on Total Collection sometimes. You um, do. The only hicc- the only hiccup is the shipping. So sometimes you need to know someone that lives in Spain um, to mm-hmm. have the book sent to them because they won't ship outside of the country. So right. I th- that's how I got one of my three um, was was using that that method. But yeah, I just got really lucky. I think I have a picture on my Instagram of two of them together. I, I only had two together at once. I've never had all three together at once. But um, I, I got one of them went to Sean McAllister and one of them went to Harrison. So. Uh, they both went to people that needed it for their collection. That's and cool. And we worked out some sort of deal or arrangement, and I it was able to help people get books that they needed. So very cool. I'm always, I'm always keep, I'm always keeping an eye out, and I know like people like Sean always do too. Like if they see this book, this is one you just pick up because you know that other collectors are going to want it and need it, and um, it's it's always nice to have one to help someone else with their collection. Yep. And interestingly, I've had people come to me and say, does it count as a translation or an adaptation? And it really is an adaptation of the Catalan, but it's still its own separate thing in my mind. Maybe it's because the cover art's slightly right. different, but that's kind of how I view it. Yeah, I feel like we all, I think we've come to the consensus that we count adaptations as different enough that they count in our quote unquote 95, which is... I. 95, I feel like, is an old term at this point because we come to realize that the variants also count. So right. is it 97, you know, or then I, it, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole this late at night. Oh, but I um, but I feel like, yeah, if we're if we're at that 97, um, yeah, we count adaptations in in that. So I definitely do. Important. 
I definitely do. Okay, let's get to the Tots rating scale because we all love that. Um, love it. Yeah. So, okay, take out your book and give it a good old smell. I thought I liked it right away, and I don't. No. I immediately have just changed my mind. It is not a good smelling book. I don't have mine in front of me, and I still remember the smell of the book, of the book and I knew I didn't like it. I don't think it smells bad. Oh, guys, speaking of bad smelling books, guess what other book is coming to my house? The bilingual Chinese book? Yes, I ordered it. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> that, right. that's a troll. That is, I have that's one terrible. through four. There's a box set of those, by the way. Oh, I don't need the box set. Wow. I just need book one, but I'm really excited about it because I know it's a smelly, smelly book. Oh, um, yeah, you'll get reeks. like the, you'll get the one that was like stored in like a flower shop, and it'll smell like <laughs> lilacs or something. Oh, mine lilac. smells my what my color is lilac. Okay, Gilroy. <laughs> mine is definitely a troll. That 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 bilingual Chinese is definitely a troll. But anyway, but back what, to what Valencian. About, what about what about this Valencian book? What do you guys, I would say you this Valencian, it? from what I remember of it, is probably like a. A poor, acceptably poor, somewhere in between there. Uh, poor for me. It's 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 not great, but it's not awful. And so it's We've but it's not worse. acceptable. So it, it's a poor. I don't yeah, know. I've smelled worse. It's a it's a poor. I would give mine an acceptable. I feel like it doesn't really smell like anything to me. That's fair. So. I personally don't find it a pleasant odor, but it's not like I would. I've smelled it three times now, so it's clearly like not <laughs> that bad. <laughs> Um, size and proportions. Um, I would give it an, uh, huh. I would, honestly, I think I would give it an outstanding for size and proportion. Is that crazy? I'd agree. Um, I'd agree with you No, I agree. Just the more I'm looking at it, like, it's thick, but it's small. (laughs) Right. Like, I I don't know. It's, It's versatile. It's like it's such a it's like what a little cutie like it's such a cute book like it's a really cool size. Honestly, I, I really because of how much I enjoy the size of this book, I really wish they'd finished the series because I would like to see how yeah. they handled four, five, six, seven. Yeah, those would but be chunky books. Quite possibly. And yeah, I'm yeah, totally, totally an outstanding. I love it. Yeah, I would say, did, Eric, did you give your rating? Yeah, oh, okay. outstanding. Okay, good deal. And how does it feel in your hand, guys? Um, I, I love how it feels in my hand. This is one when yeah. it first came in the mail. I loved how it wasn't super weighty. I could open it and read it. Like if I were to read Valencia, and I could open it and read it in my hand very nicely. It's well weighted, you know. And let's, I know that this kind of falls into the next category, but the boards, oh my word, those are chunky. They are chunky. I, I think I think this book is heavier than other books that are it of is. this size. Yeah, um, it is definitely it's not, it's a brick bad. you could it throw just, at it, someone and, it feels and do very damage. Substantial. It yeah. feels yeah, like which... there's like an undetectable extension charm on it. Like it would be like oh, Hermione's <laughs> beaded bag of books because yeah. it does not look like it should weigh as much as it weighs. <laughs> right. Like it, there's that, there's the magic in these pages for sure. The boards I, are I so cover, thick and dense. I think dense boards is mm-hmm. what I'm really, really thinking of. Yeah, and and they're they're well made. So yeah, mm-hmm. phew, that's a quality statement, <gasps> Eric. I can't talk about that yet. They're well made, which means they they feel good. They, they feel very sturdy. They feel very um, like like they're not going to go anywhere. So it it feels good to hold. It's it's it feels substantial. It feels like it's a solid book. So I'm giving it an E for for my rating for how it feels in your hand. Mm-hmm. Yep, how it feels in my hand. I'm giving it an E. Yeah, I don't know. I think I would give it a no. I'm an I o. just feel like I feel wow, like it, right. it it just I love it. I love I love the heft of it. I really do. And I yeah, also like, the like how the boards the don't like you can flop the boards open without creasing the boards. Um mm-hmm. you know, so it, it makes the book a lot more readable to me without doing damage to yeah, the book that's or all, spine. All fair. Yeah. That's Three good scores from all of us. I think that's yeah. really impressive. And moving into quality, this is a well-made book, you guys. It is. There are some dings. Like, the corners mm-hmm. can ding. The corner, um, and they like, ding really my, bad. They tend to round in pretty, pretty bad. They but round I, in. I my think spine, it's because the... spine side, especially. I think it's because the boards are so thick that it's kind of, when they get dinged, they don't they don't absorb it. It just rounds. 
it's it's all or nothing yeah. when they get dig. It's like, oh, we're going down. <laughs> they got, they got like, us. Oh, no. I don't know if, if your books do this, but like mine, the spine is like quite loose. Like if I just hold on to the spine in my hand, I could like almost wiggle it. Yes, um, it is loose. Yeah, mine, mine too. Is like you can, it can, it can shimmy back and forth. Yeah, so, I, I, so I don't know if that like adds to it and if it adds to like the flexibility of the book, like when you're reading it or if that's like I think it helps loose binding. I'm not, I th- no, I don't think it's loose binding because I've had a few of these. My book two is also the same and, and I've had several book twos as well and they all tend to have that same, I think it's honestly just how they're made. I yeah. don't know if yeah, it's as prone you, to, to spine lean it, though, like as you're reading through the if book. If you give it like a squish, like if you squish it between the palms of your hands, like you're coming hands at heart center for all you yogis out there, <laughs> like you can squish it and the spine board that they used is is wider than the actual page yeah that's so. yes um so yeah i would for quality i would give mine like i'd give mine an acceptable honestly i feel like the fact that the corners are so easily dingable i feel like does um kind of weigh down on the quality of the book even though it is so like dense and substantial um like mine has noticeable curved corners um also, but. the cover tends to rub pretty quickly. Like, it tends to show mm-hmm. rubbings yeah, it, it pretty quickly. It shows quick. a oh, lot of wear. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. And I don't really, th- I don't think, I think that this is more of a quality issue than it is, like, a cover art comment. But the logo's not centered on the book. No, I would agree. No, it's it's not. I so. feel like that's, I think that's quality control. So yeah, I, yep, I, I, I'm, keeping it, I'm keeping it at, at an acceptable for, for quality. I would go with that. Uh, like they I they picked impressive a, boards a and all of that, but I don't think I think it was put together well. I think it'll read really really well. I don't know how prone it is to spine lean because I've never seen one that's significantly lean, so I don't know if it's been read very much or not. So I can't really speak to that. But I feel like it does show wear pretty fast. I'm gonna add a plus. We should even add like a separate category called like bonus point. Or I don't know. Something X Factor. Like, I, 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 yeah, the X Fact, the wild card. <laughs> Always sunny fans. <laughs> the, and uh, cover uh, art interpretation. This is hold, probably. Hold on, Carly. Hold what? on, Carly. Fine. Hold on. Eric is I'm on a tangent. X, <laughs> okay, I'm fine. It the X Factor. I love the uh, the part in the spine that the the pages are are you know attached to is is like an alternating red and yellow. Yeah, it's striped. Yes, striped. I I love that. Like th- that's. Nothing specific. It could just be all books from Tandem have that in there. But I like it because they didn't have to do that. They could have made it all red, but they didn't. They made it's it kind of like a yellow. hidden Gryffindor moment. So, yeah, I like it. So I, that that's my little bonus bonus top, I think, the small one. I think mine is red and white. Really? So maybe mine is – my basement lights are not – no, mine's yellow. Mine's yellow for sure. <gasps> I'll send you a Ooh. picture of mine. Oh my gosh! Wow, interesting. This is exciting news, guys. A, a I wonder if they're different, different printings. Exciting. Then. <gasps> well, we'll find out later. Because <laughs> I'm now curious, for all you guys. Four people that care about this. Hey. I care. I'm like, wait, your stripes <laughs> on your binding are yellow and red, and mine are white and red. What does that? Well, mean? that would indicate possibly different print runs, potentially. Yeah, it would. And if it yeah. would, oh. if it does, then. I mean, that would make sense, though. Like, if they printed book two and then they reprinted book one, that would, like they did yeah, with, you know, totally. Tibetan. There you go. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Oh, I have a lot um, of price to talk about on this, but we'll we'll talk about this later. Right. right. Last one, Carly. And cover art interpretation. This is probably one of my favorite interpretations of the Thomas Taylor cover art. Because it's I got, agree. like, oh, the... I'll, I'll, huh? I'll, oh, go ahead. Because of the... The turquoisey tealish stripe above instead of red, and Catalan too. I don't know if they were just trying to make it different from the Catalan and say, "Hey, this isn't Catalan," because Catalan also uses different colors than the Thomas Taylor cover art. They just use the Thomas Taylor cover, but or the art, but they use different background cover colors. And uh, you know, Valencian definitely went with it and said, "Hey, we'll do we'll do this, but we're definitely going to make it our own," and they did. They did, and um, I think this is the one book that uses Thomas Taylor art that you can see the most of the illustration. You can see the entire train engine mm-hmm. and the coal car behind the engine. Yeah, they the have a like, compared definitely to a regular zoomed out. Thomas Taylor book that I always grab when I compare these two. You can't see 
uh, behind that train. You can also see platform 10, the sign for platform 10 on the far right above that other train, which you can't in the Thomas Taylor book. Right. Um, you can see like more of Harry's outfit. You can see the front of the train, the purple board with the red bumpers on it. Like it's noticeably very, they have a very out. nice, yeah, it's very zoomed more. out. I really like what they've done here personally. I love it. Plus, but can there's, I, there's no mistaking. Can I, wait. No mistaking, except for the fact that on my copyright page, it says that yeah. the illustrator is Giles Greenfield. That Mine is too. a that wow. is a that is something that I want to say we found a little bit ago. They have the illustrator wrong in the Valencian books. What? Well, wagging my finger at you, Valencian <laughs> canon book. I will say the spine of this book. I love the colors. It's like the turquoise blue, orange, and like a yep. lot lime green. Love so it. cool. It stands. And out. if they have stands Giles out. Greenfield as the illustrator, then that kind of also dates when the when these came out. Mm-hmm. Also true because he was not a thing. Nope, not until book four. Not until right. book four. Um. Did you guys already give your ratings? I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention because I was looking up like the translation. No, we didn't. We were just talking about it. Interpretation. So as I interpret this as the Thomas Taylor cover art, I'm giving it an (laughs) O just because you can see more of it. You can see more of his art. Yeah, I I totally agree. I would also give it an O. Also give it an O, and I like what they did with it. They like took the Thomas Taylor art and made it their own by changing the colors and the whole color palette. Um and I also feel like the teal and the orange that they use like contrast so nicely with the red yep. Hogwarts Express and it works all of so the other well. Colors in the in the Thomas Taylor art. So the Thomas yeah, Taylor like, art. The Thomas Taylor art by Thomas um, Taylor. <laughs> noti- notable that that this book does have a little like red not sticker but pretends to be a sticker that says like you know it's the Valencian version. Mm-hmm. So if you're looking for this, it's clearly there. Now, the cover, what I was going to say, how this ties back to our uh, font section that we talked about, the front of this book has the movie font, the Harry Potter part, which Melanie mentioned is not center. However, the spine of this book is almost identical font-wise to, like, the UK books. Like, it's got the UK Harry Potter spine font. So, it's got both. You know who else does that? Interesting. Who else does that? Carly? Greenlandic. Oh, Greenlandic. The Greenlandic spine Green font scallywag. is very different. It's not the Harry Potter font. The Greenlandic font is the one that's on the side. Is It's a different Harry Potter font. It's not. Yeah, it's different. It's, it's, it's like different, if you were to different. type in to like one of these font websites to download fonts and type in Harry Potter fonts, that font that's used on greenlandic on the spine is considered like harry potter font i always forget which one that's called yeah but, i found it um, on one of the but i've used it on so things. many like yeah i've used it on so many like craft projects and things but um but yeah that it, it's a I harry potter font but it's not used two different one. fonts for the the spine and the cover it's pretty cool mm-hmm. way to way to round it back out eric thanks you know it's just we're tying it all together i, th- I feel like when we did the one episode with the the books that are in multiple parts, and we didn't pick a translation of the show that was in multiple parts, <laughs> I, I didn't want to have that happen again. You know, we just want to keep people on their toes. You never That's know what, what you're going to get with. You never know with this. All right, all right, I think we did it, didn't we? Almost. I think so. This is a great book. If you can find one, get one. Yeah. They're awesome. And and I would say if you if you want to get both book one and book two of this, book two seems to be a lot harder to come by than the book one, which makes so sense. So for all you only Chamber of Secrets collection- collectors <laughs> out there. Collectioners. <laughs> so, so collectioners. Collectionistas. Yes. And the Chamber two, like they, they took their they took the Cliff Wright uh, cover art and made it their own. Same here. So just they're fun books to have on the shelf, quite frankly. And speaking of fun, this is where the fun ends, everyone, (laughs) because we are out of time. (laughs) But you can still hear us have fun for a few more minutes because I'm going to mention some important information. So if you want to get in touch with any of the three of us, we are all on Instagram. Carly is on there at All the Pretty Books. I am at Nocturne Eric. And Melanie is at the Harry Potter Collection. If you want to see amazing photos of these books that we're talking about, 
you can do that multiple ways. You can go to our Instagram page, which is at Dialogue Alley Podcast. You can also message us there too if you want. Or you can go to Carly and Melanie's websites, which are alltheprettybooks.net and the Harry Potter Collection.com, respectively. So they have tons of photos. You can check them out there. So if 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 you are listening to this and you're like, man, fonts, like this is this is something else. I am into it. <laughs> you might really enjoy that that might be one of the reasons why you might really enjoy uh, being part of our Discord, which is a like a chat room forum that we have that you can talk to other translation collectors and us, and you can really just have a good time and, and really, I don't want to say nerd out, because we don't all find all of these topics interesting, but someone on there will if it's about translations or this podcast or anything we've talked about on this podcast. And you can be part of our Discord by supporting us on Patreon. And Patreon is a way that you can help support our show financially uh, via a monthly donation that really just kind of covers our expenses. It, it covers our time. It covers the um, the effort we put in. It also covers our cost for hosting this podcast um, on on a website, which it does cost money to, to keep up and go on for you guys. So... Uh, we want to just keep making the show for all of you. And if you are enjoying what you hear, if you want to support us, um, from being a part of our Patreon is one way that you can do that. There are two tiers. There is uh, is the uh, standard tier, and then there is the little bit higher tier. And the higher tier does also get you access to our bonus episodes and other bonus content. So, for example, I recorded a bonus episode about the new hardcover Korean translation, which... Melanie and Carly do not have, and I gave you my thoughts on that. Melanie, you just recorded one on your last visit to the Harry Potter New York store. I did. And it was great. I listened to it, and that was awesome. That was the first time I'd ever listened to an episode that I was not a part of because I think I've been on every single episode. So I went in blind. It was crazy. Oh, that's so fun. And something I did in my bonus episode was I went back to um, earlier books that were featured as translation of the show, but we didn't, might not have done the TOTS scale on. Um, and I went back and I did a TOTS rating for one of those books. So um, I love that, that might be something that we do in the future, too. Yeah, the TOTS yeah. scale. I forget we had there was a time before the TOTS scale. And that there was so weird. there was a time we, we we talked about it. and We gave our opinion. We just didn't like have an official ranking that was you know, congruent for each book. A we format. Kind of our general opinions. A format. Yeah, we, now we have a format. format. Right. Oh, we do, do we ever? It's, <laughs> it's there. Uh, so um, if you want to join our, our Discord or Patreon, you can you can follow us on Patreon, which is patreon.com slash dialogue alley. Um, again, it's like the money is not much. If, if you would like go out to a coffee shop and buy Melanie a cup of coffee, like that's really much like all it is. Unless Melanie's getting like crazy coffee. I mean, yeah. I'm I'm a Starbucks snob, but So it probably okay. costs more to buy Melanie a cup of coffee. It probably would contribute monthly to <laughs> our, oh, that's so our embarrassing. podcast. Uh, but we want to keep this going because we love doing it and uh, we want to make sure that it lives on for people to uh, listen and learn from us and just enjoy listening in general. Um, but if that's not your jam, you can always uh, leave us a review. We highly encourage you to leave a review on whatever platform you're listening on. And that really just helps our show get noticed and picked up by other people that are looking for a podcast about Harry Potter book translations, which is a very niche market. But I mean, as we learned with our email from Nina, Melanie, that we read a couple episodes ago, mm-hmm. like there are people that are just looking for, for these kind of shows to listen to, which makes us feel really good. Oh, totally. With that, everyone, that is all the time we have on this episode of Dialogue Alley Podcast. Again, thank you so much for listening, uh, wherever you're listening, whether it's on Apple, Google, Spotify, Pandora, Deezer, I don't know where else, (laughs) anywhere else, you name it, Amazon, Alexa's probably playing it to you at your kitchen while you're cooking, who knows. Anyway, um, thank you so much for your support and for listening to us, and we will catch you next time on Dialogue Alley Podcast. Bye, everyone. Bye. See ya.